The HIV virus, which causes AIDS, has currently infected at least 13 to 14 million people around the globe. In 1993, AIDS became the leading cause of death of US males between the ages of 20 and 45. Harvard University scientists estimate that by the year 2000, over 24 million people worldwide will have full-blown AIDS, and an additional 100 million people will be infected with the HIV virus, which causes AIDS, has currently infected at least 13 to 14 million people around the globe. In 1993, AIDS became the leading cause of death of US males between the ages of 20 and 45. Harvard University scientists estimate that by the year 2000, over 24 million people worldwide will have full-blown AIDS, and an additional 100 million people will be infected with the HIV virus. However, AIDS is not the only modern plague to afflict mankind. Virtually unheard of among our ancestors, over 100 different kinds of cancer now kill over 5 million people every year. The depletion of the ozone layer, which blocks much of the sun's ultraviolet radiation, is thought to be responsible for a dramatic rise in melanoma, a deadly skin cancer. The world recession, resulting in poverty and homelessness, has devastated the healthcare systems of many countries, and diseases once thought banished by modern science have made an alarming comeback. Epidemics of typhoid, diphtheria, and even the Black Death have afflicted areas of India and the former Soviet Union. Deadly new strains of malaria, tuberculosis, and cholera are becoming resistant to all known antibiotics and are killing millions of people. Even the common bacteria that causes pneumonia, children's ear infections, and many other everyday diseases are evolving into forms untreatable by all known medicines, threatening a chilling post-antibiotic era where even the simplest infections could quickly escalate into fatal diseases. Jesus said that there would be an abundance of pestilences or diseases marking the time of his return. Epidemics like AIDS will become widespread as we enter the final era of mankind upon this planet. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. March the 27th, 1964, Alaska is devastated by a massive earthquake measuring 8.4 on the Richter scale. BL7, DGA, calling any station. It's an emergency, an emergency, any station on this frequency. Amazingly, in the 30 years since the Great Alaska Quake, there have been as many major earthquakes as in the entire previous 2,000 years of world history. The World Almanac tells us that there were only 21 earthquakes of major strength in the years 1000 and 1800. But between 1800 and 1900, there were 18 major earthquakes. In the next 50 years, between 1900 and 1950, there were 33 major quakes. And between 1950 and 1991, there were 93 major earthquakes almost tripling the number of the previous half century and claiming the lives of 1.3 million people around the world. This dramatic increase of severe quakes has led many scientists to predict that we are entering a new period of great seismic disturbances. The Bible also clearly predicts that the last days will be a time of great seismic activity, with the earth reeling to and fro like a drunken man, and the towers and the cities of the nations falling. January the 17th, 1994, an earthquake measuring 6.6 .6 on the Richter scale causes $30 billion worth of damage in Los Angeles. Seismologists predict that California's imminent big one could be 50 times more powerful. January the 17th, 1995. Over 5,000 people are killed and 26,000 injured in the Great Hanshin Quake in Japan. The port city of Kobe is devastated. Its infrastructure destroyed. 
and over 300,000 people made homeless. Japanese scientists at the earthquake center in Scuba predict a much stronger quake measuring over eight on the Richter scale could hit the Tokyo area in the very near future. When either the California or the Tokyo quakes inevitably occur, the death toll, the devastation, as well as the impact on the world economy will be unimaginable. Imagine an ancient prophet seeing a vision of our modern superhighways with hundreds of cars speeding along with their headlights blazing at night. How would he describe it? Now remember, he'd never seen or even imagined anything like an automobile before. Well, 2,600 years ago, the prophet Nahum foresaw that in the last days before Jesus returns, the chariots shall rage in the streets, they shall jostle one against another in the broadways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like the lightnings. Automobiles racing along in the night must have looked like lightning to him. And they certainly do jostle one another in the broad ways. In an average year in the U.S. alone, there are 19 and a half million crashes in which 4 million are injured and 45,000 killed. Nahum's prophecy brings to mind another important prediction regarding conditions in the last days, given in 534 B.C. to the prophet Daniel. Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. God was telling his prophet, Daniel, I'm giving this vision of the last days to you, but it's not for you. It's not for your time. It's for the end time, when many shall run to and fro. Are many people running to and fro today? It's incredible when you think that people's primary means of travel hadn't changed for thousands of years until just a little over a century ago. In 1789, it took George Washington eight days to travel 200 miles to his inauguration in New York City. The fact that it took eight days is not significant. What is amazing is that Julius Caesar could have traveled just as rapidly. No real progress had been made in transportation over thousands of years. But in a very short period of time, look how mankind has advanced. Now man not only drives at enormous speeds, but a jet can fly around the world in 24 hours and a spacecraft in 80 minutes. People travel today more than they ever traveled before. International tourism is a huge multi-billion dollar business involving over 200 million people traveling outside their own countries every year throughout the world. Spending on tourism worldwide totaled more than $3 trillion in 1992 alone, and tourist traffic is expected to double over the next 10 years. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Knowledge has certainly increased within this generation almost beyond belief. In fact, research studies have shown that the total store of human knowledge is now doubling every eight years. 80% of all the scientists who have ever lived are alive today. Every minute they add 2,000 pages to man's scientific knowledge, and the scientific material they produce every 24 hours would take one person five years to read. About a half million new books are published every year. In 1970, when Apollo 13 was lost in space, computers worked out in 90 minutes a way to bring it back. It would have taken a scientist working with a pencil and paper over a million years to figure out how to do the same feat. 
But even since 1970, computer technology has developed so fast that if the auto industry had developed at the same rate, you would today be able to buy a Rolls Royce for $3. And you could fit eight of them on the head of a pin.